Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you could join me today. I'm going to be making that lovely necklace you saw in the intro and I'm going to be using GGC's Treasure Box. The last one that she released was back in September and the name of that box was Nature's Bounty and if you were one of the lucky ones to get that box, well then you're going to have a great time making this necklace. Now if you didn't get that box, you can still make this necklace because there are no fancy focals or components of any kind. The beads that I'm going to be using are beads that you can get anywhere and you probably have some in your stash and I'll leave a list of all the materials down in the description, all the bead sizes, the colors and everything. Some of my favorite necklaces are the ones that don't follow any bead patterns. I like the ones that look randomly put together and that's what we're going to be doing today. Now sometimes when we create these kinds of necklaces we'll sit down and lick beads together or beaded components together and then discover that the strands aren't equal in length. One strand may be a little bit longer than the other but there's a way to do it where you're guaranteed to have equal length strands and that's what we're going to be learning how to do today. So I'm going to teach you how to build beaded components, arrange them in a random fashion and have two strands that are perfectly equal in length. Now if you're a beginner you may be wondering how to do that. If you're advanced you probably already know how to do it. In any case I'm going to show all of you how to do it and it's a lot easier than you think. But anyway I'm going to be using GGC's Treasure Box and if you're not familiar with that box I'll leave a link down below so you can go check it out. Gina from Gina's Gems Creations. She also has a channel called GGC's Beginning Beaters put this box together and it's absolutely wonderful and I strongly recommend that you go to her website and sign up to get the notifications so that when she releases the next box you won't miss out. So anyway I can't wait to show you how to make this necklace but before we do I have to show you something. I have to show you my kitty cats. Aren't they gorgeous? This one here is Lulu. Hi Lulu. She's so sweet. She really is, but she's not a lap cat. This one here is Boo Boo. Now he is a total lap cat. He will sit on me for hours and hours. But those are my babies. Aren't they adorable? I love my cats, but they are so spoiled. I recently had to switch their food because the food they normally eat isn't available in the stores for some reason. I don't know if it's a supply chain problem. But anyway, I did find a different kind of food and it's so darn expensive. But I don't mind. I love my kitty cats. They're my babies. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started with a tutorial. We're going to be using the beautiful pendant that came in the box. It's a long pointed agate pendant, as you can see, and it measures 62 millimeters, including the bail. And as you can see, it has all kinds of colors. And because of that, we're going to be using seven different kinds of beads all from the box. Let me give you a close up. Isn't that lovely? We're going to be using four of these agate rounds. They're 10 millimeters in size and as you can see they're the same color as the point pendant. Here are the four that I'm going to be using. You're going to need four of these crystal rondelles. These are 10 by 8 millimeters in size and the color is half silver smoke. You're going to need four of these imitation jade oval beads. They're 9 by 6 millimeters in size and the color is smoke white. There's my four. You're going to need four of these crystals. They're 8 by 7 millimeters in size and they're called twisty rosy brown crystals. And there's my four. You're going to need 12 of these four millimeter pearls and these are baked painted glass pearls. And you may have gotten a different color than me. This is the peach color. You may have gotten the burly wood color. If you happen to get the burly wood that would work as well. Okay. But since I got the peach color that's what I'm going to be using. There's my 12. You're going to need 12 of these cuboid crystal beads. They're 4 by 4 by 4 millimeters. And I happen to have the half silver dark topaz color, but if you received the peach magma color, that's okay too. So we're going to be using 12 of these. You're going to need 12 of these imitation jade rondelle beads. They're 5 by 4 millimeters in size, and the color is electroplated half blue. And here are my 12. My necklace is going to be between 25 and 26 inches long including the clasp. So obviously if you want something longer you'll have to get more beads than this, okay? Because you'll need to create more beaded components. But we'll go over that later on when we go into the design phase and we measure the beaded components and everything. We'll be using the bead caps that came in the box and we're going to be using both sizes. We'll figure out how many later on. Your box came with some clasps and we're going to be using one of the toggle clasps. And I think we're going to use this one right here because I like the simplicity of it. 
You're also going to need a couple of jump rings, and these are five millimeters in size. You're going to need some 20 gauge wire, and this one is tarnish resistant, and as you can see, it's in a silver tone. Obviously, I've already spent time designing this necklace, so I kind of know what I'm going to be doing. So we're going to start with the bead caps. I've decided I'm going to put bead caps on the crystal rondelles and the agate rounds and these white imitation jade oval beads. And as you can see, we have two different kinds of bead caps. We have these larger ones. These are nine millimeters in size. And then we have these smaller ones. These are six millimeters in size. So I'm going to put the large bead caps on the agate beads, two on each one. These crystal beads are going to have the six millimeter ones. So I'll need a total of eight. And then I'm also going to put bead caps on these white ovals. So I'll need eight for those. And for these, I'm just going to do some uh, wrapped loops. I'm not going to do anything fancy and I'm not going to add any bead caps for these. They're just going to sit alone. Now these jade rondelles are going to be grouped in sets of three. Same thing with the pearls. Let me just remove the bead caps that are left over. And I'm just dividing my beads in sets of three, as you can see. Same thing with these pearls. I thought I would straighten everything out to give you a better idea of what we're going to be doing. So once again, the agate rounds are going to have two bead caps on each. The crystal rondelles are going to have two of these bead caps and the oval beads are going to have two on each end as well. These are going to sit by themselves. These are going to be grouped in sets of three. Same thing with the cuboid beads and same thing with these imitation jade rondelles. Okay, so let me leave this on the screen for a few seconds so you can take a screenshot. As you can see, I've rearranged everything to give myself a little bit of space. So now we're going to cut ourselves some wire. And if you're a beginner, you'll need about three inches. If you're advanced, you could probably get away with less. But I would say cut yourself three inch pieces just to be on the safe side. Some of the beads won't require as much wire. For instance, these are going to be sitting by themselves. So you probably only need two and a half inches worth of wire for these. But the other sets and everything will need at least three inches if you're a beginner, okay? I've done this with less wire. But like I said, if you're a beginner, you definitely need to give yourself enough wire because there's nothing worse than working with bits of wire that are not long enough. Okay, I have some wire here. I'll be cutting some more later on, but I just wanted to get started with a tutorial. We're going to be doing some wrap loops and tools are important, okay? It makes the job so much easier. And I like to use two very thin pliers, okay? These are by Xeron. But my favorite one to use in my left hand is actually a crimping plier. Let me show you. It's this one right here. And the reason I like this one is because the tip is super, super skinny, as you can see, okay? And obviously I use the tip. I don't use this part where it's uh, notched, okay? But the other reason I like these is because they grab really well. And I'll show you later on my technique, okay? And I use this one to do the wraps because it's skinny and I can grab the end of the wire and wrap it around real easily. You'll need some round nose pliers and people always ask me about this one, okay? These are very old and they're actually falling apart because I've had them for, gosh, I, I want to say 10 years. But these are by Lindstrom and um, the reason I like these is because they have a very thin tip again, okay? But it does flare out, so I'm able to do very tiny loops as well as very uh, large loops. So these are my favorite pair of round nose pliers. Obviously, you can use any plier that you want, okay? The other important thing that makes the job easy is having a good set of cutters. And again, these are by Lindstrom, okay? And um, they cut really, really well. These are very old, and I'm telling you, I've cut all kinds of things with these and the blades are still in great condition. So having a good set of flush cutters is important as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna kink my wire, and these are by Lindstrom again, guys. These are flat nose pliers. You can tell that I love that brand. But anyway, as you can see, I'm gonna kink it 
a little bit more than a third of the way down okay just like this and now with your round nose pliers you're going to grab the wire at the short end grab that end and wrap it around the barrel of your pliers like this flip your pliers around continue to wrap that tail to the back like this remove your pliers so this is what you should have and now you're going to grab that loop with your skinny pliers like this and with another set you're going to grab the tail and do a couple of wraps just like that snip off the excess and you want to use the flush side of your cutters just like this put your thumb over it so it doesn't go flying and now go ahead and tuck in the little tail and this is what you should have once you do that grab a bead cap we're going to do the agate round beads first thread on a bead thread on your other bead cap bring them down like this get your round nose pliers or skinny pliers another reason I like to use these is because the tip is so tiny that I can place it right there right where the bead cap is I don't do very many wraps so I don't really like to leave myself too much room there okay and now you're going to line up the bottom loop like this and bend that wire away from you like this okay switch your pliers to this end of the wire now like this take the tail and wrap it around flip your pliers around and continue to wrap to the back and at this point you can turn your wrist a little bit so you can get the loop closer to the bead cap okay now you're going to remove your pliers and this is what you should have okay now we're not going to close it with wraps because we need to have one end closed with wraps and the other end open and that's because we need to arrange our links before we actually connect them okay so let me show you this process one more time here's my wire I'm going to grab it a little bit more than a third of the way down kink it place my round nose pliers on the short end take the short end wrap it around the barrel of your pliers flip your pliers around and continue to wrap to the back like this remove your pliers grab the loop and then grab the tail and do a couple of wraps just like that snip off the excess and I like to grab the loop so that I can hold it really securely while I tuck in that tail once you have your loop grab a bead cap thread on a bead another bead cap bring it down grab the wire at the very top of your bead cap like this line up your bottom loop kink your wire like this switch to this end of the pin now and continue to wrap the tail around the barrel of your pliers flip your pliers around wrap the tail towards the back adjust it if you need to and remove your pliers so the process is exactly the same for all of these beads let's go ahead and do one of these triple ones 
Once again, you're gonna grab the wire a third of the way down, a little bit more than a third of the way down, kink it. Grab the short end, wrap the tail around like this, flip it around, continue to wrap to the back like this. Remove your pliers, grab the loop, wrap the tail around, two to three wraps, snip off the excess, tuck the tail in, and now we're going to thread three of these pearl beads like this. Grab the pin at the top of the beads, line up your bottom loop, kink it, switch to this end of the wire, wrap the tail around your pliers, flip your pliers around and now wrap it to the back just like that okay so there's that let's one let's do one of these white ovals you want to also make sure guys that you always use the same part of your barrel okay and if you're having trouble with that what you can do is you can mark it with a, a permanent marker. It does come off though, okay? The ink does come off after a while. Tuck the little end in, make sure it's not sticking out, okay? And now we're gonna thread on a bead cap, a white oval, another bead cap, like this, grab the pin at the very top, bend the pin like this, switch to this portion of the pin, wrap it around, flip your plies around, continue to wrap to the back. Another thing that you really should do is you, you need to line up your loops, okay? I should have mentioned that before, but even though this side is open, you can still line up your loops like this. Now I'm going to do one of these crystals here, so same thing, kink your wire, wrap the tail around the nose, flip your plies around, continue to wrap to the back, grab the loop with your skinny pliers, wrap the tail a couple of times, Cut off the excess, tuck in the little end, thread on a crystal, grab the pin or the wire, bend it, wrap the tail around the barrel and continue to wrap to the back. Line up your loops if you need to. And you can do this now or later, it really doesn't matter. So there's that one. And now we're gonna do these cuboid beads. So once again, kink your wire. Grab the loop. And do a couple of wraps snip off the excess tuck it in and we're going to thread three of these cuboid beads like this
line up the bottom loop and now let's go ahead and do the imitation jade rondelles Snip off the excess, tuck in the little end, and now let's thread these rondelles on like that. Line up the bottom loop, kink the wire, and make your loop. line them up if you need to so basically you have seven different kinds of components and this is what they look like okay and they measure anywhere between three quarters of an inch and one inch if you're trying to figure out how many components to make for your own necklace okay I don't know how long you want your necklace to be you can always line them up like this before you connect them to get an idea of the length and when you line them up you want to make sure that your loops overlap a little bit otherwise you won't get an accurate measurement we're going to connect them in a random fashion. Okay, we're not going to follow any type of pattern. They're going to be connected randomly, but I do want to space them out somewhat evenly. So for instance, the agate rounds and the crystal rondelles are going to be spaced out evenly because they're larger beads and they have bead caps. Okay, same thing with this oval one. So even though it'll be a random pattern, it'll be somewhat planned, if that makes any sense. And the reason is that I want it to be balanced, but you're going to see in a minute, once I build all these other components, how we're going to do it. So anyway, this is what they look like. This is how you should wrap yours. So go ahead and do that. Make sure you do one loop closed and one open. And I'm going to go ahead and speed up the film and do the rest and I'll meet you back. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I finished all my components. Well, they're semi-finished. Like I said before, one loop is closed and the other loop is open. And if you're wondering about the size of my loops, they're about four millimeters, I would say. All right, so now that we've done this, now the next step is to divide all of these beads into two groups evenly, okay? So if we have four of these eye gates, we need to have two on one side and two on the other side. Same thing with the rondelle crystals, two on one side, two on the other side. Same thing with the barrel beads. Okay, so pretty much the same thing with the rest of the beads. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll speed up the video. Okay, I've divided my beads into two groups as you can see. So each pile has the same number of components, same kind of components and same number of components. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create two strands like I said before it's going to be random patterns but we do want some of the beads evenly spaced out so for example we can start this strand with this component here and then the next one can be a crystal and we're just going to lay out our components with no particular order okay So I took one of the piles and I went ahead and laid out the beads the way I want them, okay? As you can see, it's a random pattern, but what I did do is I did space out the larger beads kind of evenly, and I also tried to distribute the colors as evenly as I could, so I didn't have too much of one color on one end and not enough on the other end, if that makes any sense. So I'm pretty happy with this, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting it together. So I'm gonna start at this end, this is where the clasp is gonna go, but I'm not gonna attach the clasp until I get done because I may need to add components. 
what I'll do is I'll assemble it and then I'll measure it before I add the clasp. But another reason I want to start here is because these beads are small and I don't want bulky beads near the clasp. Okay, so you might want to take that into consideration. So let me show you how we're going to connect it. This is very easy. Take the first component, take the next component, and you're going to slip the one with a closed loop through the one with the open loop. Just like that. And now we're going to grab the loop that we're going to wrap with your skinny pliers and go ahead and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess, tuck in the little end, and this is what you should have. Once again, take the next component and take the closed loop, slip it into the open loop like this. Grab the loop that you're going to wrap and go ahead and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess, tuck in the little end, and now we've linked three components. Let me show you one more time. Take the next component, slip the closed loop into the open loop like this. Grab the loop and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess and tuck in the little end. So now we have four components. So I'm going to keep linking my components until I get to the very last one. When you get to the last one, do not close that loop because that's where we're going to be connecting the pendant. And after I finish this strand, I'll go ahead and repeat the same process with the other pile of components. And then I'll come back, measure the strands, attach the pendant and the clasp. Okay, I'm back. Here are my two strands. As you can see, they're both identical in length, okay? But the patterns are all random, and that's the beauty about creating two piles with equal amounts of components. As long as you divide your components equally between two piles, you'll end up with two identical strands. And I did measure them. Each strand measures about 12 inches, so 12 times 2 is 24, plus the clasp will add another inch and a quarter. So the total length of the necklace will be about 25 and a quarter inches by the time we add the clasp. So now all we have to do is connect the strands to this gorgeous pendant and that's very easy to do. Open up this loop, hook it onto the bail like this. And now we're going to grab the loop just like we've been doing all along and close it with a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck it in. And this is what you should have. And now we're going to do the same thing with this strand. Slip the bail into the loop like this. Grab the loop and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess. Tuck in the little end. And there's the beautiful pendant. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Now we're going to attach the clasp and you'll need two jump rings.
Take one of your jump rings, hook it onto the loop. Now you're going to hook on your clasp. Close up your loop. Make sure it's nicely closed. And now we'll do the same thing to the other strand. Connect your jump ring. Connect the other portion of your clasp. And close up your jump ring. And that's it. We're done with this necklace. And what a beautiful necklace this is. I absolutely adore these beads. They match so perfectly with a pendant. I love the subtle colors. I love the beautiful gemstones. I love that it's random. I absolutely adore this necklace. Isn't it gorgeous? It's so gorgeous with all these beautiful beaded components. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put this necklace on to show you what it looks like. Well, it's a long necklace and you can't see the pendant, so let me stand up and show you. Isn't it gorgeous? I love the colors. I really do. When you get a box that's so perfectly curated with beautiful beads, it's so easy to make jewelry pieces. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I had a lot of fun making this necklace. I hope you make one for yourself, but more importantly, have fun doing it. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.